fabulous. Okay. Uh, the appointed hour of six o'clock has been reached. I welcome everyone to this meeting of the Amherst Zoning Board of Appeals. My name is Craig Meadows. I'm vice chair of the Amherst Zon Zoning Board of Appeals. I hereby call this meeting to order. I am chairing this meeting in the absence of Steve Judd, the chair of the ZBA. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 and extended again by chapter two of the Acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Additionally, the meeting recordings may be viewed via Town of Amherst YouTube channel and ZBA webpage. Please indicate if you wish to make a comment by clicking the raise hand button when public comment is solicited if you have joined the Zoom meeting using a telephone, please indicate you wish to make a comment by pressing star nine on your telephone. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name and address and put yourself back into mute when finished speaking. Residents can express their views for up to three minutes or at the discretion of the Zoning Board of Appeals Chair. If a speaker does not comply with these guidelines or exceeds their allotted time, their participation will be disconnected from the meeting. In accordance with the provisions of Mass General Law Chapter 40A and Article 10, Special Permit Granting Authority of the Amherst Zoning By Bylaw, this public meeting has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted and mailed to parties at interest. We'll begin with a roll call of the regular members of the ZBA. Everald Henry. You should Everald? say here. Here. Mr. Henry. Was he frozen? I don't know. Everald? Did I, did I freeze? Or did everyone freeze? Here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Craig Meadows. Here. Philip White. Here. David Sloviter. Here. Steve Judge is absent. Also in attendance are Jacinta Williams, planner, and Christine Bestrup, planning director. Any other town staff you may see on the call, include I see Rob Mora, is also on the call. <coughs> Excuse me. The Zoning Board of Appeals is a quasi-judicial body that operates under the authority of Chapter 40A of the General Laws of the Commonwealth for the purpose of promoting the health, safety, convenience, and welfare, general welfare of the inhabitants of the town of Amherst. One of the most important elements of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw is Section 10.38. Specific findings from this section must be made for all of our decisions. All hearings and meetings are open to the public and are recorded by town staff. The procedure is as follows. The petitioner presents the application to the board during the hearing, after which the board will ask questions for clarification or additional information. After the board has completed its questions, the board will seek public input. The public speaks with the permission of the chair. If a member of the public wishes to speak, they should so indicate by using the raised hand function of their screen. The chair, with the assistance of the staff, will call upon people wishing to speak. When you are recognized, present your name and address to the board for the record. All questions and comments must be addressed to the board. The board will normally hold public hearings where information about the project and input from the public is gathered, followed by a public meeting for each. The public meeting portion is when the board deliberates. It is not generally an opportunity for public comment. If the board feels it has enough information and time, it will decide upon the applications tonight. Each petition heard by the board is distinct and evaluated on its own merits. The board is not ruled by precedent. Statutorily for the special permit, 
The board has 90 days from the close of the hearing to file a decision. For a, bar for a variance, the board has 100 days from the date of the filing to file its decision. No decision is final until the written decision is signed by the sitting board members and is filed in the town clerk's office. Once the decision is filed with the town clerk, there is a 20 day appeal period for an aggrieved party to contest the decision with the relevant judicial body in the superior court. After the appeal period, the permit must be recorded at the registry of deeds to take effect. Tonight's agenda. We have the roll call. I'm the chair, Craig Meadows for the night. And here, Everett Henry. You're muted. Here. Philip White. Here. David Sloveter. Here. And now we'll have the approval of the minutes from the June 13th, 2024 meeting. Has everyone had a chance to read the minutes? Is there any discussion in relevance to the meeting or changes needed to those minutes? Okay. Um, we have a vote for approval. It, no, we'll do that. We'll do the approval after. The public hearings tonight will be not in this sequence. ZBA FY 2024-22 Black Walnut LLC, a request for a special permit. ZBA FY 2024-18 Mathena Morrissey, a request for a special permit. ZBA FY 2024-17 Jonathan Clayton a request for a special permit. Then there will be a public meeting following each request, discussion following that, general public, public comment period and other business not anticipated within 48 hours, followed by an adjournment. The first order, order of business tonight is the approval of the minutes. Are there any other edits to the minutes? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of June 13th, 2024. So moved as a Okay. Second. Approved and seconded. The vote requires a roll call vote. The chair votes aye. Mr. Henry? Aye. Mr. White? Aye. Mr. Sloviter. Aye. The minutes are approved. Uh, we will switch the order of tonight's meeting such that ZBA FY 2024-17, Jonathan Clayt, request for special permit under section 6.3 and 5.10 of the zoning bylaw to create a flag lot and to construct a single family house on the premises at 47 Redgate Lane, map 11D, parcel 166 R-N, neighborhood residence zoning district, which is continued from May 9th and May 23rd, 2024. There is a request to continue to October 10th, 2024. Chris, shall we take each one of these separately? Yes, please. Um, I believe that we have a representative. I don't know if he wants to speak about this. Mr. Reedy. Sure. Thanks very much, Mr. Meadows. Uh, for the record, Tom Reedy, attorney with Bacon Wilson out of Amherst uh, here with Jonathan Clayt. S simple request for a continuation to October. That's the first date. Uh, Bucky Sparkle, obviously, uh, engineer is unable to be here. And that's the first date that he and Mr. Clayt will both be able uh, to attend. I think it also gives uh, Mr. Clayt some time to take a look at the site. Um, and then if he's able to talk to some neighbors, have a conversation with some neighbors. So with that, we just ask for a simple continuation to October. Will everybody 
will all of the members who are on that panel, and I can only assume that Steve Judge will be, but are is there any conflict with any of the other members? No, I have no conflict. Doesn't appear to be any conflict. Uh, do we need a vote on this? Yes. So we'll have a vote on this. Is there a motion to approve uh, the continuance to October 10th, 2024 of ZBA FY 2024-17? So move. Second. Very good. Um, all in favor, please say aye. The chair says, votes aye. Mr. Henry. Aye. Mr. White. Aye. Mr. Sloviter. Aye. The continuance is granted. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, the second item that we'll take up tonight is ZBA FY 2024-18. Mathena Morrissey, a request for a special permit under section 3.3211 of the zoning bylaw by to convert a single family dwelling to a non-owner occupied duplex with a requested waiver from the sign plan at 180 North Whitney Street, map 11D, parcel 261, RG, general residence, zoning district. This is continued from May 9th and May 23rd and June 27th, 2024, and the request is to continue to July 25th, 2024. Mr. Reedy, again, do you wish to? Yeah, I, I think you, you you summed it up pretty well. So we're just asking for continuation for, for two weeks. Uh, this requires a roll call vote. Uh, first, a motion to, to continue it. So, so July 25th, 2024, Mr. Slover, okay. Mr. White. Okay, uh, roll call vote, Mr. Henry. Aye. Mr. Sloviter. Aye. Mr. White. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Motion's passed. It will be continued to July 25th, 2024. Thank you. Next, we have ZBA FY 2024-2022-22, the Black Walnut LLC requests for special permit under sections 10.33, modification amendment or renewal of the zoning bylaw. To modify the special permit ZBA FY 2001-18 and FY 1997-4, uh, four seven apparently, by removing condition number 15 of FY 97-47 and replacing it with language that requires upon change of ownership and management that the new owner manager appear at the ZBA public meeting for acceptance of the existing management plan or modification thereof on the premises located at 1184 North Pleasant Street, map 5A, parcel 140 in the B-VC Village Center Zoning District. Mr. Henry will take over for me at this point. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Now let me just. So just for clarity in the application packet, I have from FY 2001 18, 1184 North Pleasant Street Plans 6642. Um, FY 2024-22, Black Walnut Inn Management Plan. FY 24-2022, Black Walnut Inn Management Plan Addendum, BWI. FY 2024-W22, Black Walnut Inn Photos Attached. FY 2024-2022, Black Walnut Inn Revised Site Plan. FY 2024-22, Black Walnut Inn Special Permit Application of 1184 North Pleasant Street, 2024. Um, Macris designation, AMH.83 Black Walnut Inn. Um, ZBA FY 2022 Par Black Walnut Inn, 1184 North Pleasant Street. Those are the submissions that I have. 
Um, who represents Black One and N? That's me, Mr. Chair. And Mr. Reedy, I can... we, will, we will hear from you. Sure, thanks. Uh, for the record, Tom Reedy, attorney with Bacon Wilson out of Amherst here on behalf of the Black Walnut in in relation to the, the modification of the special permit, as the chair mentioned, and the also acceptance of a new site plan. With me this evening, I've got Dan Burbine, who is the current, uh, hopefully soon to be former operator of the site. And then I've also got Justin Colleen and, and his team, um, who are gonna be the new operators of the site. Um, I'll, I'll somewhat simply walk you through what we're asking for. It, it is really simple. Uh, we might get you out of here in 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 no time. Um, but I'll show a map of the location. We'll talk about the new site plan. But from a high level, what this is, is it's uh, an inn that's been in existence at the corner of uh, North Pleasant Street and Pine Street in Amherst for ages. I think Dan has uh, operated it for the past 30 years and it's time to hand the baton. And Justin and his team have experience um, operating and in. Justin is a, a well-heeled, well-known entrepreneur in the area, property owner. It's really going into good hands. I've seen the interaction between Dan and, and Justin, and I'm I'm really excited to see what this property has as far as new life uh, being breathed into it. Uh, inns are allowed as a principal use. However, here where it's a, um, a an accessory use. And so the owners have to reside on the property. Uh, uh, I think uh, Gail and Darren are going to reside on the property to, to operate it. And so we're just using this as an accessory use at some point in the future. Uh, Justin and his team, uh, Gail, Megan, Darren, they can always come back and ask for it as a principal use but right now we're only talking about it as an accessory use. We've got permits dating back to 1997 as modified in 2001. One of those conditions, as the chair mentioned, uh, causes the permit to expire upon change of ownership or management. We're looking to just eliminate that condition. So just take it out and substitute, therefore, something that the board has done elsewhere, where it just requires a new owner or manager to come back in front of the board at a public meeting and to submit a, a management plan or to say, hey, I'm going to follow that management plan. So that's that's what we're asking for, pretty simply, is essentially to eliminate that condition, substitute it with a new condition. We have a management plan that uh, Justin has put together and has submitted that we'd ask to be accepted. And we also have an updated and accurate site plan uh, that we've got from uh, Randy Iser, a, a local surveyor. So I'll, I'll share maybe... Uh, two, maybe three screens. We've submitted photographs if you've seen them or if you've been by the site, nothing's changing uh, on the site. It is what it is. It's really just the, the ownership management that's that's changing. Um, and then uh, we'll just walk you through the, the site pretty simply. So you know, with that, I will first bring you into just a pretty simple, if you can see my screen, this is just the Amherst GIS map. This yellow is the outline of 1184 North Pleasant Street. You've got Puffton Village, North Village to the south, 116 to the west. Pine Street runs east to west to its north. So you've got um, the Mill District in North Square up here. You, know, you zoom in a little bit and you can see the, the size of the site. I, I, I do represent Cinda, and she was telling me that this was their former ho homestead. I think a Jonathan Cole's home from, and I don't know, Dan, if you know, but it, it's it's certainly um, old. And so this is the site that we're dealing with. Um, and like I said, nothing's changing. What I'll do next is I'm going to show you the site plan that we're asking to be accepted. Again, pretty simple. So you should be able to see my screen. Again, we've got the parking spaces here on the southerly side. It's a it's a pretty expansive parking lot. Plenty of area for guests to come in to drop off and to park. Plenty of uh, space for deliveries. 
Um, you've got your crushed stone walk here. You've got the actual inn in these buildings. You've got the, the carriage house or the, the owner's quarters, I'll call it, over here. Separate driveway off of uh, Meadow Street, which I think it, it may have turned to Meadow. Uh, it might not be pine at that place, so I might have misspoken earlier. Um, post and rail fences in certain areas, stone walk, uh, and then some just identified snow storage areas here. But what we're asking for is the the plan that you had on record showed like a loop in this area, and it wasn't as detailed as what's here. This is what's on the ground. We're not proposing any changes. All we're asking for is an acceptance of this um, as the site plan associated with this special permit. And so then lastly, let me just get into the, the photographs, which Justin was kind enough to send to me in an email. Um, just to, and again, if you've been by it, you know exactly what we're talking about. You know, Black Walnut Inn, uh, old brick building. I think Jacinta did a terrific job finding the Mass Cultural Resource Information System information on this uh, as a as a historic structure. So some pictures from the east, some pictures from the south. Again, from the south, you can see the inn, the the entries and exits. You can see uh, the lighting. Uh, what we have as far as, you know, the downcast lighting uh, for the site. And then you can see it. Justin did a good job of getting this taken at night. So you can see the uh, sufficiency, but not overbearance of what those lights are. Um, I don't want to belabor it any more than we have to. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have on any of that stuff. Like I said, Justin and his team is here. Uh, Dan is here. If you've got questions specific to operations, we're happy to answer them. You're muted, Mr. Henry. Does any member of the board have any questions? I just want to make sure I understand you, Mr. Reedy, since no one seems to have any questions, that what's being requested is a change on paper, not on anything physical or structural or anything. Correct. I mean, on paper and then operationally there'll be somebody new there instead of Dan it'll be Gail and Darren and then Justin and, and Megan uh but it's but the, yeah it's it's a paper it's a transaction essentially understood Ms. Bestrup um I'd like to point out that um Ms. Khan is has joined us and I think um Jacinta reached out to her and other associate members today, and Ms. Khan said that she would be able to attend tonight. And so um, I think sh she may be planning to vote on this case, which would be fine, but I wanted to let everybody know that she was here. And um, so welcome, Ms. Khan. Thank you. And, yep. So you have five members now to vote. I don't think I can vote. I'm not the voting member. You're not a voting member? I thought you no. had been. Oh. I'm sorry. Yeah. My mistake. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is, I, I did not see any public comments in the packet, Ms. Bestrup. Did we not have any public comments? We did not receive any public comment. Okay. And is, is this the part where we actually go to the public and see if there are any comments as to mm -hmm. this app application? Yep. Mm -hmm. So at this stage in the hearing, I'd like to invite anyone from the public to make any comments that they wish to hear. Um, again, be mindful that public comments um, should be kept to a three minute minimum. The chair at his discretion may extend that comment, but we do try to stick to that three minutes. As well, please direct your comments to the board and not necessarily to the applicants. The applicants will have the opportunity to respond after public comments are made. Ms. Williams, are there anyone in the audience who wishes to make a public comment? I don't see any raised hands. I I don't have Mr. Sloboder. Yeah, I, I, I just, wait a minute, am I muted? No, okay. So I just want to 
be clear on two things. The word plan is often used to something you plan to do in the future. In this case, the site plan that you're asking us to accept is really a diagram of existing conditions and nothing that you actually plan to change in the future. That correct? correct. That okay. Correct. The other thing I think I heard and read is that you are asking us to remove a condition that says that you need to come before the ZBA when there's a change of ownership. Is, is that correct? Are you asking or are you here complying with that condition, but you don't want to change it? So it's it's a good question. We are asking for the removal of a condition, but the condition that we're asking for the removal of says the permit will expire upon change of ownership or management, which has in effect a requirement that we have to come before you. But it's somewhat of a I'll call it an obsolete condition that we don't all we don't see that much anymore. And I would suggest in this circumstance, it's probably not appropriate. So we're asking for that elimination, but we're asking for a substitution to put a new condition in that makes us actually come back before you at a public meeting, a new owner at a public meeting to have the management plan approved. So it's not like you're relinquishing all ability to know what's transacting at the site. It's just the permit would still live uh, and not expire in the condition that we're proposing, if that's clear. Okay, okay. thank you. Mr. White. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Reedy, just a quick question, um, and maybe I just misheard it, uh, but in reviewing the management plan, um, it does state uh, Gail and Darren Chevalier, and if I brutalize that last name, I apologize, um, will live on site. Um, at the beginning of your presentation, I believe you said that they might or may be living on site. It's I just meant at this time, like literally okay. while I'm talking to you. I don't know if they are living there, but as a result of this, they will live on site. Okay, thank you for the clarification. And and if I may also get a clarification, um, the parking shall conform to the parking plan dated May 22nd, 2024, and then file in the planning department office, the driveway and parking services shall be asphalt and or brushed stone. Um, that has been filed and accepted by the town. My... Um, do you want me to answer that? Please. Yes, please. We have received yes. the plan from the applicant, but now it's up to you to approve that plan, to accept that plan, and then it will be kept as part of this, um, the record of this hearing um, in our offices. And also, you know, it'll be available electronically. And, and how is that different from the previous um, parking plans that were previously on file? The previous parking plan showed another parking lot over near the carriage house. And it was, um, I think, probably 15 or 20 more spaces, but that was never built. So that was approved as part of the previous uh, special permit, um, but it was never built. So now we're reverting to the existing conditions and saying, you know, this is what's being approved now so that the building commissioner has a record of what is being approved and won't be relying on the plan that was approved years ago, which I think was in 2001. Okay. Thank you. So if there are no other questions for um, the applicants and or the owners, I would entertain a motion to move this to a public meeting. Um, or does the board feel that we need more time to review and discuss? So moved. Resolution. Who, who moved, Mr. Meadows or Mr. White? Hey, Mr. Meadows, do I have a second? Mr. Meadows. Oh. Mr. Meadows was second. Okay, thank you. The motion has been moved and seconded um, by a vote. The chair votes aye. Mr. White? Aye. Mr. Sloviter? 
Aye. And Mr. Meadows. Aye. We're now moving this to a public meeting. Um, at this point, this is where the board deliberates and make findings as to the applicant's request. Um, is there any discussion? Mr. White. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, since we have Mr. Morrow on the on the line, I would just ask if he has any recommendations for us, uh, any thoughts? Sure, thank you. Uh, so uh, staff has reviewed the uh, the application, um, including the, the site plan, which is probably the, the, the item we spent the most time on since there were no other changes being proposed to the management plan or otherwise. And, uh, you know, we have no uh, reason to believe that the parking space count isn't adequate for for the use uh, currently going on there. We, it certainly isn't uh, an issue that we uh, respond to uh, for parking matters. Uh, so I think having the the new plan or the updated plan clearly defining uh, what's actually out there uh, is to all of our uh, advantage. Uh, so uh, yeah, no concerns, and uh, we we are supportive of the application. Thank you, Mr. White, and thank you, Mr. Mora. So I see that um, the staff has put together some findings. Um, do we need to go through all these findings, Ms. Bestrup? It would be helpful, I think, unless the board feels that they already understand them and is willing to just go ahead and approve them. There are two sets of findings, one under, under Article 5 and mm -hmm. one set under um, Article 10.38. And there may also be a finding under 10.33, although I would ask Mr. Mora if he thinks that's necessary. Uh, I'm, I'm looking for that in the application report. What's the 10.33 finding? 10.33 is at the bottom of page <clears throat> three, and it just says that um, the use will not endanger the general public health or safety. It's um, about the modification amendment or renewal of a special permit. So as an amendment, sure. That needs to be, that's a finding. And then all the 10.38 findings need to be made. And then the findings with regard to accessory uses. So those are found on page two and three and on until page, I don't know, five or six, something like that. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to read them all or just say, has everybody reviewed them? Given that we do have some time and um, I'll make it brief. Um, on Article 5 Accessory Use, Section 5.01020, um, there shall be an owner who resides in the premises responsible for the operation. In accordance with the management plan, the owner proposes to reside on the premises and be responsible for the operation. 5.01021, the building shall be connected to the public sewer prior to occupancy. The building is connected to the public sewer. 5.01022, there shall be no separate cooking facilities. However, breakfast may be provided to bed and breakfast lodgers. There are no separate cooking facilities proposed. 5.01023, one parking space shall be provided for each room occupied by bed and breakfast lodgers in addition to the parking required under section 7.000. The proposal meets this requirement under article seven, section 7.001. The management plan states that there are 20 plus parking spaces provided on site for the bed and breakfast and the single family home. Section 5.01024, retail and consumer services shall be provided only to bed and breakfast lodgers and shall be clearly secondary and incidental to the bed and breakfast use. Retail and consumer services will be provided only to bed and breakfast lodgers and will be clearly, clearly secondary and incidental to bed and breakfast use. 5.01025, a management plan as defined in terms of form and content by the rules and regulations of the ZBA shall be part of any application made under this section where retail and consumer services are proposed. Such information as the Board of Appeals may require on these services shall be included in the management of this plan. A new management plan has been submitted with this application. 
under section 10.3 special permits. The special permit granting authority shall have the authority to modify, amend, or renew its approval of a special permit open written application of the owner, lessee, or mortgagee of the premise, provided, however, that such action is consistent with the purposes and intent of this bylaw and the public hearing has been held. The use will not endanger the general public health or safety or constitute a nuisance or result in a detriment of normal use of adjacent property by reason of noise, dust, or vibration or result in traffic hazards in residential areas or excessive congestion or physical damage on public ways as required under section 3.373.6 of the zoning bylaw and therefore it is acceptable for the board to issue this renewal. Section 10.38 specific findings required and 10.381, the proposal is suitable located in the neighborhood in which it is proposed and or the total town as deemed appropriate by the special permit granting authority and the proposal is compatible with existing uses and others permitted by right in the same district. The Joseph Cole's house as also known as the Black Walnut Inn is part of the North Amherst Center Historic District and has been located within the neighborhood since it was built in 1821. It was designated a historical landmark on December 13, 1991 and is considered an historic building it has, it has operated as a bed and breakfast for decades. Section 10.382, and 7. The proposal will not con constitute a nuisance due to air and water pollution, flood, noise, odor, dust, vibration lights, or visually offensive structures or site features. The proposal would not be substantially inconvenienced or hazard to abutters, vehicles, or pedestrians. The proposal reasonably protects the adjoining premises against detrimental or offensive use on the site, including the air and water pollution, flood, noise, odor, dust, vibration, lights, or visually offensive structures or site features. The proposal provides convenient and safe vehicular pedestrian movement within the site and in relation to adjacent streets, property, or improvements. The proposal seeks to ensure the management plan and ownership of the inn are consistent and in compliance with the purposes and intent of the zoning bylaw. 10.384, adequate and appropriate facilities would be provided for the proper operation of proposed use. The applicant's management plan affirms that the applicant will continue to maintain the premise in a manner in which neighborhood and community have come to expect and appreciate. 10.386, the proposal ensures that it is in conformance with the parking and sign re regulations under Article 7 and 8, respectively, of this bylaw. The applicant's management plan affirms the main parking area consists of 20 plus parking spaces located to the south of the inn, where the applicant reports is more than adequate to accommodate guests and staff vehicles. Additionally, two spaces closest to the main entrance will be designated for handicapped parking and appropriate ADA signage will be installed. The owners are not anticipating or requesting to hold special events such as wedding receptions on the property. The applicant's management plan affirms that the existing signage one block walnut end sign on the eastern front face of the building will remain. There are no additional plans at this time to erect any temporary signs, road signs, or additional signs. Should this change, the applicant promises to abide by the existing bylaws and regulations regarding sign requirements. 387, the proposal provides convenient and safe vehicular and pedestrian movement within the site and in relation to adjacent streets, property, or improvements. If the special permit granting authority deems that proposed likely to have a significantly adverse impact on traffic patterns, it shall be permitted to require a traffic impact report, and the proposal shall comply with section 11.2437 of this bylaw. The applicant's management plan affirms that it will provide safe and adequate lighting for guests to travel to and from their vehicles to the building. Additionally, there is only one gravel lot with entrance and exit on the North Pleasant Street. 10.38. The proposal ensures adequate space for off-street loading and unloading of vehicles, goods, products, materials, and equipment incidental to the normal operation of the establishment or use. While the submitted application does not directly address off-street loading and unloading, the management plan does state that the main parking area to the south of the inn is more than adequate to service and accommodate both guests and staff vehicles. Staff infers this will include off-street loading and unloading of the vehicles. Staff also concludes that the larger vehicles such as catering events and party rental trucks will not be an issue since the management plan clearly states there are no plans to host weddings or other events. 
10.389, the proposal provides adequate methods of disposal and or storage for sewage, refuse, recyclables, and other wastes resulting from the uses permitted or permissible on site and methods of drainage for surface water. The submitted application does not address methods of disposal and or storage for sewage, refuse, recyclables, or other wastes. So it is recommended that the board inquire at public hearing. And with that, I may pause. Ms. Bestrup and Mr. Moore, are there any concerns as to 10.389 in terms of methods of disposal and storage? Um, because I read somewhere that this, uh, this property was connected to town sewer. Doesn't that address the issue or is this a different issue to be considered? I don't think there are other issues to be considered and I'm looking for the management plan now. Um, Ms. Williams, do you have a copy of the management plan? Because that should state, that should make a statement about the um, refuse disposal. It does, it's the, it's the, the first, first section. One. You would say waste for trash and recycling services? Yes. Management plan overview, okay. Does that satisfy the town's concern? I think Ms. Williams wrote this um, report, so does she have any concerns about use disposal? I don't have any concerns. I just wanted to highlight it in case there were other questions that anybody else wanted to ask. I know that the application mentions that there um, will be waste retrieval at least once a week. Um, but I didn't know if anybody wanted to go further in depth about anything. So that's the only reason that note is in there, but I think everything else is sufficient. Thank you. Is there some way to word that now so that it can be turned into a finding that the application does have sufficient methods of disposal and or storage for sewage, refuse, and recyclables and waste? Yes, I think we can say that the management plan and the application um, meets the requirements and addresses the concern. Thank you. That will be under 10.389. Yes. Okay. Okay. Continuing to 10.390, the proposal ensures protection from flood hazards as stated in section 3.228. This requirement is not applicable. Um, 10.391, the proposal protects to the extent feasible, unique or important natural, historic or scenic features. By requiring new ownership to accept the site plan and a paper for the ZBA to either accept or modify the existing management plan, the proposal ensures a historical character of the property shall be maintained. 10.392, this talks about adequate landscaping, screen of adjacent residents, Residential uses, provision of street signs, landscape islands in the parking lot, and landscape buffer along the street frontage. Gail and Darren Chevalier will live on site. They will maintain the grounds year round. They have ample equipment to do so. That is tractor, mower, power broom, hand tools. 10.393, the proposal provides protection of adjacent properties by minimizing the intrusion of lighting, including parking lot and exterior lighting through use of cutoff luminaries, light shields, lowered height of light poles, screening, or similar situation, similar solutions, except for architectural and interior lit signs, all exterior site lighting shall be downcast and shall be directed or shielded to eliminate light trespass onto any street or abutting property, and to eliminate direct or reflected glare perceptibly to persons on any street or abutting property and sufficient to reduce a viewer's ability to see. The existing yard and parking lot lights will be maintained and co converted to dark sky compliant fixtures where applicable. Main entryways will be illuminated during checking hours. The night manager will turn off non-emergency lights once all guests are for, in for the evening. 
There will be no installation of bright lights, motion lights, etc. A light bulbs will be under 3000 K lumens. Does this require, um, the language says, um, the lights will be maintained and converted to dark sky compliant fixtures. Has that already been done or is this something that is going to be done? I think it's intending to be done. Okay. So, Ms. Bestrup, is this something that, would this be a condition to approval or are we comfortable with leaving as is? That can be added to the conditions. Okay. That all lights shall be, all exterior lights shall be dark sky compliant. That could be condition number six okay. when we get to it. Thank you. Ten point three nine four. The proposal avoids, to the extent feasible, impact on steep slopes, floodplains, scenic views, grade changes, and wetlands. This finding is not applicable to this report. Ten point three nine five is not applicable to the project. Ten point three nine six. The proposal provides screening for storage areas, loading docks, dumpsters, rooftop equipment, utility buildings, and similar features. All equipment for the upkeep and maintenance of, of the grounds will be stored underneath or inside the large barn, a three-yard container for trash and two-yard container for single stream recycling will be located out of the way at the end of the parking lot. Both receptacles will be serviced weekly. There's an alternative area for trash collection off the adjacent Meadow Street entrance behind the owner's quarters that can be used as needed. 10.397 is not applicable. 10.398, the proposal is in harmony with the general purpose and intent of this bylaw and the goals of the master plan. The proposal meets requirements within section 10.38 and all of the applicable standards found within the zoning bylaw. We now move to, can, I hear- May I, I ask a question? question? Yes. yes. Mr. Henry, may I ask a question? Yes, Ms. Bessera. Yeah. Um, this would be a question for Mr. Mora. Um, do the conditions from previous special permits carry forward? Um, so I guess I'm asking, is there a need to read all of these conditions or do we just assume that all the conditions carry forward unless they're being changed? And that's a question for Mr. Mora. There's no need to read all the conditions, only the ones that have changed uh, are being considered tonight. Okay. And those are included in the list of conditions that are possible conditions for approval. Is that right? I believe there's an op there might be an option in the possible conditions, but generally that's correct. Okay. I, I do see where a reference the conditions that's been modified references the special permits from the previous grants and authority. So I think they're accounted for. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. So we now move to special conditions for approval for ZBA FY 2024-22. The property shall be managed in accordance with the management plan approved by the board. And that will be if we vote on today, that'll be today's date, correct? That's correct. Okay. Condition, re remove condition number seven from ZBA FY 2001-18, and that would be parking shall conform to the parking plan submitted in November 16, 2000, and on file in this office, the driveway and parking surface shall be asphalt or crushed stone. And replace the language that accepts the parking configuration as it appears in the new site plan prepared by Harold Eaton and Associates Inc. dated May 22nd, 2024 and labeled existing conditions. And I believe up in discussion with Mr. Moore and Ms. Bestrup, there are those are acceptable, correct? Yes. I believe yes. they are. Thank you. And ZBA FY97. Dash 0047 shall be revised by removing condition number 15 
which states that this permit shall expire upon change of ownership or management of the Black Walnut Inn as modified to say that this language shall be changed to read upon change of ownership or management, the new owner manager shall pay for the ZBA, the public meeting for acceptance or modification as approved by the board. If I accept the new site plan prepared by Harold Eden Associates, Inc., dated May 22nd, 2024, in existing conditions, parking shall conform to the parking plan dated May 22nd, 2024, prepared by Harold Eden Associates, Inc., and on file in this office. The driveway and parking surface shall be asphalt or crushed stone. And as we discussed prior, condition number six, all lights shall be downcast and sky compliant. Mm -hmm. So the number six can be a little bit shorter than it shows here. It can just be stating that all exterior lighting shall be downcast and dark sky compliant. Thank you. Are there any discussions on the findings from the board? Are there any discussions on the conditions or does anyone have any proposed conditions to be added from the board? I don't see any hands, but in fairness, I'm only seeing half the people. Okay, so with that, I would entertain a motion to not only um, approve the findings, but as well approve the conditions and grant the special permit ZBA FY 2024-2022 for the Black Walnut Inn. Is there such a motion? So moved. moved. Second. Oh, oh. It's been moved and seconded. Who been... moved? Who seconded? So removed and Mr. Frank Meadows seconded it. Thank you. And I think we need, is it four or is it three? A uh, four. Okay. So the motion has been moved and second. The chair votes aye. Mr. White. Sorry, my mouse was sticking. Aye. Mr. Meadows. Aye. And Mr. Sloboder. Aye. The motion has been approved. ZBA FY 2024-2022 is approved. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Reedy. I'm going back to the agenda, just bear with me. Are there any other business that were not part of the agenda, not anticipated within 48 hours? The only other thing is that um, often the chair asks for an update on upcoming ZBA applications. Um, and I would like to notice, to note that uh, for your benefit, that some people have joined the meeting probably expecting that um, Mathena Morrissey's case and Mr. Clate's case are being considered tonight because they were after the Walnut Inn on the agenda. But you um, have continued those public hearings to a date certain in the future. So I wondered if you would like me to say that or if you would like to say that. I think they may, I think they may have heard you. So if you can just announce those new dates for both of those, that'd be great. Thank you. Okay. So... Um, Jonathan Clate's uh, special permit application has been continued to October 10th, and that has to do with 47 Redgate Lane. And Mathena Morrissey's special permit application for 180 North Whitney Street has been continued to July 25th. So people who are in the audience expecting to hear about those two cases, those aren't being considered tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bestrup. 
And if you will take us through the agenda for the next upcoming meetings, please. So um, on July 25th, you have uh, the Shootsbury Road Solar Project is coming back um, to update you about um, that case. And we are asking KP Law to come in on, well, I'll get to that in the future. So anyway, Shootsbury Road Solar, we'll just be updating you about the status of that case. Then you have Lane Quarry, which is the quarry down in the notch on Route 116, and that's coming in for a renewal of its special permit. And then, of course, we have Mathena Morrissey coming back um, with a continued public hearing on 180 North Whitney Street. Then on August 8th, you have um, Amherst Development Associates, um, which is owned by Kurt Shumway, uh, and he is coming in for um, to turn the University Motor Lodge uh, using um, the non-conforming section of the zoning bylaw 9.22. He would like to create a social dormitory at the University Motor Lodge at 345 North Pleasant Street. So that will be coming before you on August 8th. And then in addition to that, we're hoping that Carolyn Murray of KP Law will come and give you a training on 40B um, comprehensive permits in preparation for the submission of the uh, Wayfinders project, which is um, for the site on Belchertown Road and the site at the East Street School. Uh, and then she will be refreshing your um, knowledge about 40B. And then on August 22nd, um, you'll hear about Canton Ave, Canton Avenue, which is a um, flag lot that has been reviewed by you numerous times. Um, they had their um, location of a single family house approved a year or so ago, but now they're coming back and they're wanting to put in a duplex. So that will be coming to you on August 22nd. And in addition to that, we're asking Jonathan Murray, who's also of KP Law, to come and give you a uh, presentation on the legal aspects of solar permitting. This is something that Mr. Meadows had um, suggested in preparation for really considering this uh, Shootsbury Road project. So he's gonna be talking about um, chapter 40A, section three, which has uh, some exemptions with regard to solar and explaining to the zoning board what it can and cannot do with regard to permitting. And then on August 29th, we're hoping to have the first um, session of the public hearing on the Wayfinders Comprehensive Permit um, Project. And that will probably require, how many did we say, Jacinta? Um, six or seven public hearing sessions throughout the fall? Yes, that's um, correct. We're hoping to, so we're hoping to connect some of those with other projects so that you won't have to meet every week that you <laughs> be able to just have maybe one extra meeting a month in order to tackle that one. And I think that's all I am aware of. Are you aware of anything else, Jacinta? No, I think you covered everything. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So it is fair to say then that um, we're not going to essentially have any decision on shoots better until after we meet and do the 48A training, because that'll make sense. That's correct. I think it's going to take a while to get through the Shootsbury Road project because um, they also have to get through the Com Conservation Commission. So what I've asked um, Jonathan Murray to do is to give you a general um, talk about the legal aspects of solar permitting, not to focus on the Shootsbury Road solar project because it's not part of the public hearing process. So it wouldn't be fair to focus on that project, although I'm sure that neighbors and others who are associated with that project will want to um, listen in. But it's it's not a public hearing. So I'm asking Mr. Murray to steer away from direct um, comments about Shootsbury Road and just to give you a, a general overview of how to um, permit a solar project. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Williams. Um, just a quick addition. We did leave out on July 25th, Frank Patel will be coming before the board. Um, I think it's very simple. 
He's just looking to, let's see, continue using the property as a multi-rental unit, but I think there's a condition in his special permit that says that he just has to come before the board to just kind of present that nothing's changing. And I think it's an administrative approval. Um, Mr. Mora, am I correct in that? Right, so pre uh, presenting a, uh, no changes to the management plan or to review the management plan, right? So it's not a public hearing, it's just a public meeting, right? It's just a public meeting. Uh, Jacinta confirmed that there are no changes proposed. Thank you. Ready. I think we covered other business not anticipated within 48 hours. Mr. Sloviter. I have a question for Ms. Brestra. The you mentioned that there were a number of people who had signed on in connection with Mr. Clayt and Ms. Morrissey's projects. They all disappeared early once we passed those. I noticed the participants all left. We, uh, especially the North Whitney proposal is in only two weeks. Is Do you notify people so that they have an opportunity to do whatever they were going to do tonight. I, I assume people showed up, signed on because they wanted to participate and then were surprised that we continued that. Is there, do you do anything to make sure that they know that uh, when it is, has been rescheduled? We don't do that. Um, it's not required by state law or by local law, okay. but I right. know that these, um, neighbors are in touch with one another. So if one of them heard tonight uh, that we had continued the public hearing, some of them were here in the beginning and they did hear that. Some okay, of them so they know. Later. So okay. they will tell each other. And whenever someone submits a comment to us, um, Jacinta and I write back to them and say, thank you for your comments. And this public hearing is being continued to X date. So I think okay. it will that information will get out there. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. May I make a statement? Yes, please. Um, I wanted to thank Mr. Meadows and Mr. Henry for stepping in tonight and on short notice and, um, you know, sharing the meeting and sharing that Black Walnut in public hearing. Um, I know it was probably <laughs> not expected, but thank you very much. It was really very helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. And we got through it in... Less than an hour. <laughs> so it is 7.03. I would entertain a motion to adjourn ZBA public hearing for July 11th, 2024. Go Thank ahead, you. Philip. Take the honor. <laughs> and so moved. I, I second that motion. Um, I think we need a roll call vote. Mr. Meadows? Aye. Mr. Sloveter? Aye. Mr. White? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Thank you all very much and have an early good night. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks yeah. very much. Thank right. you.